All right, the Reds, it's Talking Reds. Talking Reds on the day of a huge match in the Champions League between Real Madrid and Liverpool, two of the heavyweights of European history. And we have got Graham Hunter with us today, uh, delighted to say. Spanish football expert, broadcaster, journalist, author, podcaster. And I can Scorpio. Genuinely... Hey? Scorpio. Scorpio. If, uh... if you're doing a full list, uh, let, let's be exhausted <laughs> in the detail. Eh? It's about and the only I... thing that was missing there, wasn't it? I can genuinely say as well that Graham's uh, podcast is well worth an in, uh, a listen. The big interview, uh, one of the best out there. If you haven't had a go at that, go and have a listen, uh, including some Reds on there as well. I, I remember listening to one with Steve McManaman. Uh, I remember listening to one with Peter Beardsley, I think, as well. So yeah, Kloppo. Kloppo as well. There you Virgil. go. Virgil. There you go, Virgil. Look, he's, got, really? he's, got, he's done the lot. He's done Deep the lot. There you Robo. go. You'd be putting us out of business here, mate, by the end of this. <laughs> finally, the penny struck with you, finally. But Graham, uh, I did mention there, uh, obviously, you know, two huge clubs. Uh, Real have won this competition 13 times. Liverpool have won it six times. There's obviously a little bit of history between the sides. Everyone had teamed in Spain yesterday in that press conference was trying to get Klopp to talk about revenge and he, he wouldn't do it. Um, but Mo Salah has said it would be special to him because, you know, obviously it, it did affect him what went on with Ramos in that 2018 final. How, how is everyone s perceiving this game in, in Spain, Graham? Gee, let's start on a mission. Let's start with the Anfield Rap, um, Britain's foremost media fucking outlet. It's Madrid. There's no such team as Real. So from you outwards to the world, let's start today and in 10 months and 10 years, chart the moment when you... Gareth Roberts turned the English speaking world onto the fact that it's Madrid, <laughs> not Real. Madrid. Okay. That's and if any, I don't know what language barriers there are on here. I don't mean Spanish English, but if any cunt calls Atletico Madrid, Madrid, they'll get the Zoomer development technology from, for me to give them a fucking piss. <laughs> piss like that. I, I remember that Kiev moment really, really clearly um, because. You know, it felt not only like a, a pretty even game, but if you remember the, the throw-in where there was a turnover, and I didn't think... I've spoken to Liverpool players subsequently. We've named some of them who were like, he didn't mean to fuck his shoulder. He didn't mean to injure him. He meant to foul him. And the breakaway, I remember doing analysis of it on TV. The breakaway, Liverpool have caught Real Madrid horrendously positioned. And Ramos doesn't just go, there, there's Mo Salah. He's like, if, if this guy gets past me, we're fucked in behind. Mm. There's overs. It's Liverpool. 70-30, we're going 1-0 down. When I spoke to the, the, at Melwood to a number of different players and staff, they were all like, it's not deliberate intention to, 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 to ruin him for the game. It's a foul. It's a tactical foul. And in the end, you get a bad day and something like that happens. And I thought that all the bleating from the media um, about, you know, a deliberate foul and therefore... And it's like once you... It's like, do you remember? I'm oh, shit at maths. But, like, one of the things they used to do is give you a point, didn't they, at the end? If you got the sum wrong, but your workings were right, mm. they'll give you a point, which is the most unbelievable thing ever. But it works in reverse in some parts of the media. Talk shite the first time, and then in five years' time, there's a pretty good chance you'll be able to resurrect it, whether it's fucking true or not. <laughs> and that's what's been happening. And, and Mo Salah's spoken a lot, because obviously him and his agent, starting from an interview about six weeks ago, which they conducted in like, Cheshire with Diario Ass, there's a little bit of uh, cage rattling going on. But in the in the Spanish interview he did it with Marca, he was like, what use is revenge? Is that going to give us that cut back? Is that going to give us a final back? You, you only said, and I agree with you, he said it would be special. Of course, of course it would. Underneath it all, <laughs> I don't really care. I've found my career on not massively caring what the rest of the media are saying. You pay attention, but like if, they, if, they, if, they're, if they're full of horse, then you ignore it. And you're so, uh, the Uncle Rap is so inexorably linked to football people. You'll have heard these refrains as often as I have. But in my opinion, revenge is one of these things that is a complete public 
persona and a private persona about they 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 haven't been at, at, at Liverpool's new training ground hubble bubble boiling trouble and, and and leaning over a hot cauldron and throwing frogs legs in and candles and sticking pins and wax effigies although it seems to have worked such a ram off they haven't been living off the, the blood of revenge but you've played sport anybody listening that's played sport or or been pissed off in the playground at somebody who's who's, who's nicked their, their, their lunch money. Revenge is, is part of the human condition. Mm. And I think if Liverpool were unhindered, in my opinion, Gareth, you asked me, unhindered by such a brutal injury list, if, if it hadn't been such a brutally difficult season to defend the title, revenge probably wouldn't be anywhere in their, you know, in their in the top layer of their psychology. But you know, they've looked uh, in some matches, a bit woebegone. Sometimes they've looked a little bit tired. Sometimes positionally, Liverpool have looked much easier to break against, and that's left you what I don't know where you are at the moment, sixth, seventh, sixth. Fighting to get top four and, and pouring all your chestnuts into this competition. And therefore, why wouldn't you use revenge? You know, one of the most successful managers, if you if you just exclude the the quartet, quintet of the greatest Liverpool coaches was obviously Fergus. And right from his days when I met my and right through Manchester United, what was Circle the Wagons? The whole list of worlds against me was made up, but it was used to give the players a jag. So why wouldn't in private senior players who were on the pitch in Kiev that night, Klopp, Pip Linders, another big interview, Pip Linders, the most recent Liverpool one we've done, why wouldn't they be using that as a little jab, a little jag to, to say, maybe not pre-match, but at half-time, if, if Liverpool look as if they're, they're struggling with the pace a little bit or they've had bad luck with their feet. You use that to get... Do you, do you not agree, guys, that you, you don't live off it? it you, you, you play to win tactically. You, you try and undress your opponents in terms of where, they're, you know, where their bum looks a bit big in this. All of those things, tactically, strategically, and imposing Liverpool's rhythm if they possibly can. And, and protecting, presumably, it'll be uh, Nat and Ozan at the back, you know, in the middle of the two full mm. as good as they are. This is relatively new territory for them. So all of those things come first. But wouldn't you, I mean, asking you honestly, wouldn't you be using that little pill of revenge a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I think you drop it in there. There's still there's still seven Liverpool players kicking about who were, who were there then. There's still seven on Madrid's side who, who, who were there then. So yeah, I, I think you would drop it in. I think Klopp was clever though, not to not to to bite in the press. You conference never say in public, do you? Yeah. No, that's what but, I mean about there's a there's. But however many times in interviews you ask about revenge, ninety nine times of one. No, 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 no. What are you talking about yeah. behind the scenes? Like, Fucking do these boy work. <laughs> it's the it's the most basic thing after winning in sport. Tell us about Madrid then, Graham, because you know from from the outside looking in, um, you know we're, we're not all watching Madrid week by week or La Liga week by week. But a, a few things we do know and we have seen is that obviously Madrid aren't actually playing at home; uh, they're playing at the, at the Alfred de Stefano Stadium, the, the the reserve team stadium, if if you like. Uh, they have lost seven this season, and five of them have been home fixtures. Um, the, they've suffered a lot of injuries; they're not unlike Liverpool in that respect. And yet, I I hear when I speak to other Reds, you know, there's a lot of blase anus I'm hearing about Madrid about sort of oh no, they're not what they were. They haven't got Ronaldo. They haven't got Bale. Um, Hazard is is injured. Uh, Modric is 35 or whatever he is. You know what I mean? There's there's a lot of talking down of Madrid, and yet you look at the Liga table right now, and they've got every chance of winning the league by the looks of things. I think that uh, I think. What I fear a little bit, because much though um, I'm not I'm not a supporter of any club apart from Aberdeen. So when I say I'm not a Liverpool supporter, I use that in context of the fact that I've been throughout my life I've learned a lot from Liverpool. You know, given my age, I, I've learned a lot from Liverpool from the very early seventies through Aberdeen's first title win since 1955, and we draw Liverpool. And we queue all night for tickets and we go and watch them. And it was brutal, ruthless, really nasty, brutal, ruthless at Pitoji and 1 0. And from, from then till now, throughout all the difficulties and some of the dignity and tragedy, this, this current era I've learned a lot from because you're a club that likes to share with certain parts of the media. And, and it's been a real privilege to watch and learn. 
and therefore I wish them well. But you know, my livelihood is here, and therefore, you know, on balance, if they deserve it, I'd like Real Madrid to go through. But I view um, Liverpool as slight favourites for some of the reasons you've touched on. One thing that that, that Zidane is about is that there's no way that you, you you could say that he's without nuance and intelligence tactically. But is he one of those coaches who's ultra good in terms of strategy? No, he reminds me of the old old school British managers whose whose brilliance was about player whispering or in the old days player sergeant majoring. You can't beat this squad up with a big stick and say do this, do that, because they've largely won everything. They've done it for you. They're brutally wealthy. And what Zidane has got is this magical ability to keep 95% of his squad um, dangling on the end of every gesture, every word, wanting to please him right across his two different reigns at the club, Gareth. He's, he's, he's managed to make most of the players feel like it's a meritocracy. And at Madrid, that largely hasn't been the case. It's like, who's the most expensive? Who's the best paid? Who's got the biggest ego? Who's the president's buddy? And Zidane doesn't treat it like that. If you um, if you work well, even if you're ranked in his mind player 15 or 16 in the squad or 17 or 18, you'll get shots, you'll get chances. He does use the squad widely. And therefore, there are things to admire about the squad and you could name them. Courtois, although I want to, if you come back to me, I want to talk about a flaw he's, he's got against a side like yours. Courtois is on some of the best form of his, his life. Um, they're brutally, brutally going to miss uh, Carvajal. Nobody talks about him. They're going to miss him a lot, particularly against a side like Liverpool. And Ramos, it's a loss whenever he, he isn't there because their stats of winning in the Champions League matches, not finals, without Ramos are horrendous. But mm. Gareth, he wasn't fully fit. So it's not the most brutal loss. In terms of your your snapshot picture of them across the season, that midfield when it's functioning of Chris on the left and Modric right but popping up everywhere and Casemiro being the 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 good cop and the bad cop and the Guantanamo Bay cop, he, he's he's won street smart shrewd football, and and that will make it difficult for some of your midfielders in this tie. He's very very clever, and and Benzema's on you know even at the age he's at, uh, three more goals makes him the third all time top scorer in the Champions League. Um, I think since Cristiano left, he's been unbelievable in shouldering the responsibility. Since Cristiano left, he's got 80 goals. And this was the guy who was the servant to the nine before and denied himself scoring chances. And suddenly he's going, yeah, I'll step up. Uh, not just step up in goals, but the position, the responsibility, where he moves. So the things I would say that answer some of your questions about Madrid's season is that you know, they're missing key footballers in that Hazard and Benzema are a, a diamond partnership. For as little as they've been able to play together, they just think with the same brain and it's beautiful to watch. And that's that's a plot, even though Hazard, you know, were he on the bench today, and I think he'll be on the bench against Barcelona this weekend, he's not going to be fully fit, even if he mm. features at Anfield. But they're sensational together and Hazard makes Benzema better and vice versa. So, it's a little bit of a stroke of luck for you that, that they're not together. Um, Carvajal, Ramos, fully fit. They're, they're big losses. Ramos wasn't fully fit. So it's, it's Carvajal that I think um, is useful for you that you're not playing. And Gareth, Roma did are, are a little bit one pace. The Premier League has always been more ferocious, more I'll chase you, you chase me, playground football. <laughs> it's noisy and it's entertaining and there are some exceptions. But when, when Spain's league was, was dominant, which I think it has been for 15 or 16 years, it was about the fact that the ball moved more quickly and positional football left players who charge around with little little penalty for their actions in England being exposed a little bit because Spain's teams are, are have been strategically and technically a little bit above. And now Real Madrid are, are trading in all glories. It, it, you look at their um, Champions League performance this season. It's been Harry Houdini written all over it. Five of the 15 goals have come in the last 80, in the last 10 minutes. Usually 84, 85, 86, 87, 89 minutes. They've they've really had to get out of jail against Shakhtar, which they couldn't do, get out of jail against Inter, even at home. Um, the Atlanta goal came in the 89th minute from the right back, uh, the left back off his right foot, you know, outside the box, Mondi, um, against 10 men. Again and again and again, they've had to pull out 
real uh, rabbit from hat performances. And I, I wonder if one, Liverpool's tempo, if you can impose it, and, and you, you're verging towards not a best 11, but a best eight, best nine now. Mm. Um, now, I think. Um, are all of them at peak form and peak athleticism? I'm not convinced, but if Liverpool can impose the tempo, if they can press, I'm, I'll close my point on Kurtas saying that one of the things he doesn't like is being pressed. And, and Klopp and Linders will have picked that out. And, and therefore, you're attacking players, whether it's because you went to 4 2 3 1, didn't you, Arsenal, midway yeah. through the game. So the three plus Jota could be incorporated. Boy, if he if he plays that, I'll be I'll be fascinated to see what impact it has on Real Madrid. Um, Couture doesn't like being pressed, and his distribution and his choice of passes and his reaction isn't what you see from Ederson and Allison and Stegen and Neuer, the, the the new the new guys, the new brand of keeper. So Madrid are are, are are brilliant technically. They've got fantastic brains. Casemiro, Cross, Courtois, um, Benzema. Um, Modric are just made from the right stuff. They're, they're, they're winners and they do whatever it takes to win. But they're a, a team that's a little bit one-paced. So if you if you if your what 14, 15 players that get used tonight hit that level of quick transitions, pressing, um, hurrying Madrid up, I I think the the pendulum swings towards your team a little bit. That's that's my honest opinion, but. If you're not on it, if anybody's a bit naive, but they're still good enough to punish just yeah. about anybody that's left in Champions League. That's the truth. You, you, you've mentioned that they've been sort of sailing close to the wind a little bit, Real Madrid, this season in, in terms of the way they've grabbed some of the victories. Um, and you mentioned Benzema as well, 33 now. 24 goals this season, which is obviously really mm-hmm. impressive. Uh, right up there. I mean, Salah's got 26 for Liverpool, but 24 is equally impressive. But there's a huge drop away after that, isn't there, in terms of goal contribution from his teammates? So, I mean, I'm not saying Real Madrid are a one man team by any stretch here, but what I am saying is he's the obvious goal threat. And no, there's not much more after, is there? Gareth, I'd, I'd, I'd dance with you on that, um, to be honest with you, because it, it, I know you weren't saying he's a one man team, because if you've got Cross and Modric and Casemiro and, and Courtois and Vinicius yeah. and Rodrigo, then he's, they're not. With him, Madrid have a chance of beating Liverpool. Without him, I, I think they have no chance because they do struggle a little bit for goals. And what you get is the odd moment of sublime intelligence, uh, no, sublime technique and pace with Vinicius. Both Modric and Cross are still scoring goals from outside the box. They practice shooting from distance a lot. It's not something that, that teams generally nowadays put a massive amount of emphasis on, but Roman they do. Um, so the, the, this idea about the ball being laid back from, and, and again, we're not 100% sure of the formation. Normally you'd be able to say, stand on me, it'll be 4-3-3. Three, three. Zidane's been mucking about with a 3-5-2 uh, in recent weeks, uh, and it's it's worked about once. But there's still a suspicion that the team will be, I mean, a suspicion that the team will be Courtois, with your three centre-backs being uh, Nacho Varan and Mondi, your two wing backs then being Marcelo and Lucas, your three in the middle obviously being the big three, and then your two up front probably being Benzema Asensio. Now, in that instance, what you need to be looking for is Lucas and Marcelo cutting the ball back to the edge of the box in a way that probably the centre halves can't get out to. So, whoever is the middle of the park for you without Jordan, whether it's Thiago or Vinald, I'm not sure who the third midfielder might be. Fabinho. Fabinho would be the one. And yeah. against Barcelona, his presence in, in the middle, that, that organising pivotal position and his fouls, I mean, no, no no messing about how he stayed on the pitch over the two games. He's as streetwise, this ex yeah. player, as Casemiro is. So and, and, you know, fair play. So that's something to look out for. But the goal supply, you're right, isn't... Um, they've been saving their money. Um, to try and get Mbappe, and if not Mbappe, then Haaland, and blah, 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 blah. That's what they have been doing. Who's got goals? Essential's got goals. Not just the fact that he scored two in his last two, but fuck me, when he strikes it from range off his left foot, he's absolutely gorgeous. He's looking after the injury that he got in the summer of 2019 against Arsenal in a friendly. Kept him out for a year, Gareth. You know how that changes the player's athleticism. Mm-hmm. He's looking as if he's finding his tempo again. There's goals there. And if it's 3-5-2, he plays closer to Benzema. 
So instead of being out in the wing and having to run in and cut in and have a shot, he's he's finding spaces off Benzema that, that benefit him. So that might be something that you see at the Alfredo Di Stefano uh, this evening. And um, Rodrigo has got goals. I mean, he's young, he's slight. Both he and Vinicius are on a really steep learning curve. There's a huge, huge amount of responsibility placed on their shoulders. Each of them, I think, still is 20. And I haven't looked recently, but I'm pretty sure that each of them have not, neither of them have turned 21 yet. So still, you know, that, you know, where was De Bruyne? How did he look at 20? Where was Mo Salah at 20? You, you, you weren't going world-class, world-class, world-class. These two are being asked to be world-class every single time they step in a pitch because Madrid is Madrid. It's a very different club from Liverpool. So there is a drop-off from Benzema. You're 100% right. Um, does it mean that if he doesn't score, Madrid won't score? No. Um, but it is a problem that might cost them against Liverpool, might see them eliminated against Liverpool, and which they have to address soon because generally in games, Gareth, they can be in a game, they can be on top of a game, they don't kill it, which which your front four and Origi against Barcelona, I won't call him a front five because he's injured and he's been so eclectic as a footballer, mm-hmm. but your front four, you, you do when when they're ticking, you do that, you kill games, which I don't then do now. We we t- we talk it a lot, yeah, inevitably about Anfield, the power of Anfield, what's missing from football right now, um, and you know we we get a bit of ridicule from elsewhere about oh the scousers always say their grounds better than anyone else's, all of that kind of thing. What what's the impact? Do you we won't get you into that. that Muppets? I know exactly, mate. But but in <laughs> in Madrid, what what what's the talk being about? the shift from in ground is that seen as being no. influential on results or not no no I, d- I don't think so um if you look at it it's it's about n- number one it's rare you can get at the Bernabeu the Anfield effect you absolutely can I was there you know one night against uh Manchester United I don't know when it was in the season in fact it'd be 2004 2005 in the season that Ronaldo scored his hat-trick at Old Trafford so I'm excluding classicals, which can often be, you know, poisonous and noisy. And if Madrid are dominant in their own turf, then it, the stadium can bounce. But it's rare you see what I saw that night against Manchester United when the Bernabeu, you know, on that night, I think the seat, <coughs> seating standing arrangements were different and it was about 80,000 there. And the, and the stadium was flipping, bouncing, more people than in Anfield. But at Anfield, you get that more regularly. I know it's changed over the years. Society, culture, fan culture has changed over the years. The types of people that go to games, but still, you know, it's 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 more. If you think about Hoffenheim or, you know, in the modern era, there haven't been many better than the night against Barcelona, which was no surprise to me, but it was to some of the the people that live over here. It's rare that the Bernabeu is like that. Mm. Um, if they hate the visitors or if they got the scent of blood, yeah, it can be good. But Madrid were capable of freezing or, or be looking a little bit lazy at a at full Bernabeu on a Sunday at two o'clock, just as much as they are in an empty of Di Stefano. And, you know, if you look at how they came back from the, the, the pandemic-enforced break last season, you know, I think slight majority of their games were at home. Of the 11-game sprint, they won 10 and drew one. Um, it, look... Never mind the advantage it does or doesn't give to any team. We're fans at heart, irrespective of what we do for a living. You know, it's just shit without fans. And and it's yeah. rotten that a tie like this, you know, and also for the, you know, I feel for the, for the City players because as much as it would power up Dortmund to go to, you know, Signal Iduna and, and go to Westphalia and, and listen to those fans and, and see a, a, a poor Dortmund side inspired by what is one of the most mental fan bases in the world. It, it's just a shame, but it can't be helped. It's for the right reasons. Gradually, your country's letting fans back in. So, do Real Madrid lose an awful lot because of the pitch? No, the pitch is outstanding. Have they been relatively able to, in the Champions League, cope with being Alfredo Di Stefano? Relatively so. Um, the, the worst one was the loss at home to Shakhtar, where Zidane mucked about with the team, got it wrong and was punished on the break. You know, would they like to be playing? If it's if it was, a you know, at home at the Bernabeu full against Liverpool, yeah, it would give them wings a little bit. 
but over the piece, does it does it has it hugely mattered to them? No. And look out, look out, look out, look out. Because, you know, what they've done to the Bernabeu isn't just modernize it, change its comfort levels and capacity. They're gonna the, the concept is that they're gonna change it. Again, if people want to listen to the Paul Burgess interview, because the ground, head groundsman for many years has been Paul Burgess has just left. And they're, they're, what they're going to do is change the Bernabeu, not into a football space that can host events. They're going to change it into an event space that on, um, what, what's it, what's your home games in, in a in a 38-team league. The home game is 19, right? So mm. let's pretend it's 19. I said at the beginning I wasn't very good at basketball. And you get, you know, four cup games in 10. So you, 40 times a year you play football on it. And they're going to they, they're, they're gonna bury the Santiago Bernabeu turf under the Paseo Castellano. It's going to be sitting in a in a sort of science fiction lab under the, the main street in, in Madrid. And it's going to be brought up for football matches rather than the other way around, converting a football stadium into an event space, mm. which once we get rid of the pandemic and, and once they're able to use Madrid as, a, as, a, as an entertainment city again, it's going to make Real Madrid fucking oodles of money <laughs> it's a brilliant idea it's cost yeah. them a bomb but look out in the future because in my opinion it's a game changer it's gonna have a roof as well isn't it it's gonna have a roof it will be at or around the most impressive um best equipped stadium in the world partly because it will be at the time it's inaugurated the most modern but they put an awful lot of thought into this and, and some of the dreams that they're realizing in the new stadium are dreams that I know they've been publicly talking about and trying to fund since 2003-4 so Real Madrid's finances attractiveness to, to host um, Champions League finals um, their ability to, to to make it an iconic stadium will go up and I, I, all of us who love Not just the architecture, but the image and the feel of old stadia. Yeah, will lament its loss because it's going to look very, very different. And it's going to look, a, you know, your typical cough lozenge now. You know, it's just going to look like oh, there's a giant silver cough lozenge. And not for me. But when they're counting their money and signing new players, they'll, they'll be saying, "Oh, I'm really sorry that Graham's unhappy the way the stadium looks." Oh, God. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, last last one, mate. I just wondered what you thought, of how how influential it would be, or how much of a ball like he even it is for Zidane, that in between the two matches with Liverpool, there's Barcelona in between. He doesn't think like that, honestly. You know, all his life, even at Cannes and Bordeaux, he's a guy for whom big tests were second nature. Um... All his life, all his playing life, he's a massive um, responsibility on his shoulders. He always says, has always said as a footballer and a coach, uh, if, if you want to be in the league, this is what happens. This is what you deal with. Mm. You know, bring it on. It would be a phrase he doesn't use, but you know, euphemistically, that is what he's saying. Sure, if he could have nicked the Glasgow out of the way a couple of weeks ago and beaten Busson at home and got the head-to-head -head double over them and and, and being breathing down Atleti's neck and, and only being able to concentrate in Liverpool. Yes, he's fine. But he's not one of these. He does. He does. He, work, he wastes in public or in private. Not one fucking second. Going, oh, I wish things could be different. <laughs> I mean, as I say it, could you imagine Zidane sitting there with Batoni and Saki? Oh, no, David, this calendar. Fuck me. You know, Leonard Roster star. I don't fucking think so. I'll tell you something. I also want to throw. I know you're you're not representing the club today, but um, on Friday, I think, or Thursday. I spoke to Reese and uh, Nat interviewed them, and what a pair of, of gents! What a pair of characters at their age, with not huge amounts of experience. What bright, um, articulate, interesting fellas they are, and and just a, a pleasure to to meet two more emerging footballers, not just at Anfield but in the Premier League. They've got things to say um, who who are interested in their own sport, their own development, can talk about it. You know, at that age, I think it's it's exceptional, and and maybe not both of them start tonight. Probably Nat does, Reese doesn't. It's just a real pleasure talking to them, and I, I like, you know, I like the fans that follow Dante of Rap, and who look at these guys and maybe haven't had a chance to see them much in action in, in public. Yeah, you got two 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 toppers there. Yeah, definitely. I think I think Nat in particular has done 
So fantastically, and 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 that's starting to be recognised by us all now. Some 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 people have been a little bit disparaging towards him. Some nice game that... against Atalanta, didn't he? He's what, sorry. Did he have a nice game against Atalanta? Second yeah. leg. Yeah. I don't mean Atalanta. I don't mean Atalanta, do I? Yeah, I do mean Atalanta. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I thought he. I thought at Anfield. Did you win two 0 No, I'm not talking. No, not Atalanta. Blimmin, um flipping. Uh, Leipzig, Leipzig is what I mean. Leipzig, yeah. I mean, yeah. At my memory is almost as terrible as yours. Yeah, no, no, me. Leipzig is what I meant to say because I've spent so much time comparing Gasparini and Nagelsmann in terms of how anarchic their football styles are and how unpredictable the two teams are. And it was against uh, Leipzig that I thought he played really, really well. And um, boy, you've had to rely on some... I mean, if you think about um, Kelleher and... Um, Curtis, the two I've mentioned. Um, Ozan's not that experienced in the Champions League no, either. A young lad, yeah, he's only 21. Simicas, and I'm missing at least one or two more kids who've had to come in and really yeah. show and shine and take responsibility. I, I, for, because I'm not a you know a, a, a little fan, I, I can I don't feel the pain of the, the, the defeats or the disappointments. But I look at the I look at a season and Boston are similar. You know, they, they, they've had so many problems. It was so embarrassing at the beginning of the season. It was civil war last summer. And yet, look, Araujo, uh, Pedri, uh, Mar- Ilas Mariba, Ricky Puch, Dest. I, I love seeing development at any club, particularly yeah. when you're reaching the academy and you go, not only are they there, but they're good enough. It's brilliant to see. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. Uh, we, we seem to be in good shape for the future. Um, and so do you, Graham. Um, the GrahamHunter.tv, if you want more from Graham. He's Bumper Graham as well on Twitter. And there was loads of plugs in there, wasn't there, for all the podcasts he's done. I don't even think he mentioned that he did one with Milner there as well. Millie, uh, I said Millie, if you go back on the tape. Oh, honestly, you did. You got it's, 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 there. Uh, you say Millie, I, there's no I shouldn't be mocking with about with nicknames. I shouldn't be mocking <laughs> about with nicknames. But I remember uh, very early in the interview when I was talking Kirsten Swain, like I did with you, he, he, he's like, is this allowed? And we did part of it in Spanish as well because he's so good in Spanish. What a fucking character, man. What a, what a blessing for any club that man is. He's real, 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 real um, hero of mine. Somebody I admire massively. And so I'll cross the two ties, whatever happens. I hope I see him getting some game time. Whether it's starting, whether it's as a sub, you know, I'd like to see him savouring another shot at Real Madrid. Absolutely. Very rarely let anyone down, James Wilner. Uh, Graham, thanks very much for coming on this morning, mate. Um, yeah. Brilliant stuff as ever. Hope you've all enjoyed uh, Graham's chat there. And as I say, look him up, get involved, listen to his podcast, follow him on Twitter, all of that kind of stuff. And enjoy That's the wise. game. That's right. Enjoy the game, yeah. Yeah, listen, I st- I'm willing to have my head, you know, to slap if, if it doesn't go the way I said. But I think by a, by a margin, by a whisker margin across the two ties... <laughs> I think it. I think it probably should be Liverpool. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. That's been talking Reds. Thanks very much. Cheers, Graham. Adios. Adios.